Well, good morning, Element Church. I am so excited to be with you this morning and talking about the ancient spiritual practice of Sabbath. First, I wanted to say thank you to my husband, Pastor Scott. Thank you so much for that incredibly kind uh, introduction. I I'm so grateful for you. This whole community is so grateful for you. You are such an incredible leader, incredible husband, father. I honor you and I appreciate you and thank you for all that you do. And every week bringing such an incredible word to this community and using your gifts and your talents for God's purposes. So thank you so much. All right, you guys. Are you ready to dive in? So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about spiritual practices. And really, uh, this is actually a quote from uh, John Mark Comer, who I will be referencing quite a bit today. But he actually says that information alone does not produce transformation. We need to practice the ways of Jesus, these spiritual practices that we've been talking about um, to transform our minds, our bodies, and our muscle memory. So information is amazing, but as we are talking about all of these practices, we actually need to do them. And so I'm so excited because that is not a one-time thing. This is actually an invitation for the rest of our lives to spend our time mastering these practices that are the foundational pieces to a transformed life, to the life that we all long for. So I cannot wait to dive into Sabbath with you guys today because it is, it is one of the most ancient practices that oftentimes I don't know if we've really done uh, an adequate job in the Western church really talking about it, at least in in my season of the church. I'm sure we've talked about it. I know uh, I've heard about it, but it really honestly wasn't until 2020 when God really captured my heart. Uh, as I was listening to a book by John Mark Comer, who I referenced earlier, called Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. So I'll uh, tell you a little bit about that story uh, in a minute. But I just um, want to precursor this by saying I am not, I would not claim to be an expert. Really, it's been about four years now that our family has been actively weekly practicing Sabbath, but I am just like you. I am on a journey, a journey of transformation, a journey of learning, a journey of becoming, or a, a discipleship journey of Sabbath. So I hope today is 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 helpful that I can kind of take some of the things that I have learned and picked up along the journey over the last four years and pass them along to you as help, as tools, as inspiration, as a foundational, hopefully some theological foundation. But I just wanted to let you know that we're in this together. Um, We are all on a journey together. That's why community is so powerful so that we can journey together. So let's do that. Let's go on a journey together with Sabbath today. So as I was mentioning, I was reading the book, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And it had been a book that had been recommended to me for years. And in 2020, when we had a slowdown season, right, where there was more margin. I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to this book. So I was out um, actually mowing the yard, which often, most of the time, isn't usually my job. You know, we all have our different roles in our household, and it isn't typically my job. But for for whatever reason, that night I was out and I was was contributing. I think I was straightening up some lines um, as we were teaching our son in that season to um, mow the yard. And I happened to be listening to the book. And it was such a compelling book. It was really one of the first times where I was like, oh, wow, I think I have a problem. (laughs) Well, maybe not the first time I realized I had a problem. That's an ongoing uh, journey. But in the area (laughs) of of being hurry sick, of of not necessarily knowing how to slow down and, and knowing how to work hard, but not necessarily how to rest. And hearing uh, John Mark Comer talk about uh, learning how to rest, and one of the chapters was specifically on Sabbath. And when I listened to that chapter, it really, I heard something different for the first time. I didn't hear Sabbath as a to-do or just a command 
even though it is a command, uh, I heard it as an invitation. I heard it as an invitation to a day a week where my soul could be restored, an invitation to obedience to the Lord, to entering into a holy day with him that he designed every week where I could have what my soul was longing for, which was rest. See, like I said, I knew how to work really hard, but I think I was waiting for someone to tell me, okay, honey, you've done enough. Now it's time to rest. And as we all know, no one's ever going to tell you that. It's something that you have to be responsible to do for yourself. But what I couldn't do on my own through will or permission, I actually found a way to do that by being invited to obedience. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But uh, today, what I really want to talk to you about are four spiritual theological ideas and then four practical ideas when it comes to Sabbath. And then I just want to give you a little bit of a picture of at least our Sabbath, what that looks like, and maybe uh, some ideas about what a Sabbath day could look like for you guys. So we're going to jump in. Those four theological ideas are that Sabbath is a command, that Sabbath is a gift, that Sabbath is a day of identity formation, and that Sabbath is a day of desire calibration, trust, and resistance. Uh, The other four things that we're going to talk about Our practical themes for a Sabbath day, uh, to stop, to rest, to delight, and to worship. So we're going to dive in, and we are going to start with number one of our theological ideas, which is that Sabbath is a command. So I'm going to read some scripture to you. It is actually the fourth commandment, and in Exodus 28, it says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your sons or daughters, nor your male or female servants, nor your, an- nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. It was for everybody, you guys, for and is for everyone. <laughs> For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. In Genesis 2, 2 uh, through 3, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Yeah. So first and foremost, it is a command, but it is modeled by the creator of the universe. John Mark uh, said that the first thing that compelled me in his book, again, uh, was that if God thought that a pattern of working for six days and resting for one was a good idea, why did I think that I was above that? God, we are made in the image of God. Uh, And this is another one. Um, Well, I'll stop there. Guys, we're made in the image of God, and he patterned this for us. He patterned. Six days he worked, and on the seventh day he rested. So he first he patterned it for us, and then he actually instructed us to do it. He said, he made it one of the Ten Commandments to go, guys, this is really, really important. And so um, it was, it was, uh, this is, uh, again, And this is really true for me, too, uh, but it's actually a quote from John Mark. It says, for me, it was the beginning of a new season of trust and releasing control, a new season of saying, God, you are God and I am not. I trust you. I trust your ways. I will be obedient to you and pattern my life after your patterns in a new way. I will learn new things. And that was such a challenge to me. It was such a challenge in that moment to go, okay, I... I don't know if I can give myself permission to do this because I was, I, 
I definitely, you know, whether it was American thing, I grew up in a really hardworking family, which was so valuable. Um, and, and I knew how to do those things. But resting was not something that I was good at giving myself permission to do. I figured I would do that at some point when I, you know, got certain things taken care of. But hearing that, uh, that it was a command from the Lord and, and, and that he did it and ha- trying to pattern my life after him, it was like, okay, well, what I can't maybe give my permit self and permission to do, maybe I can actually out of trust and obedience do it. And that gave me so much strength to go, okay, I'm finding a reason to prioritize this and to carve out the space, the space and go, okay, I don't, I don't know if I can figure this out. How am I going to do this, God? But I'm going to trust you. And luckily, my husband was on that same page. God had been speaking to him for a long time also about uh, really getting serious about this. And obviously, we had always tried to like take a day off, but we didn't know how to do a Sabbath day. A day off is not a Sabbath day. A day off where you catch up on yard work or you're just not you know, doing your normal job, but you're doing lots of other jobs and carrying lots of other responsibilities, that is not a Sabbath day. That is our American Sabbath day, which is not a God Sabbath day. And so it started on this journey, this, 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 this compelling, uh, on the inside to go, okay, God, we want to be obedient to your ways. We don't want to do this our way, God. We want to live our life your way. So if this is something that you want us to do, then we're going to trust you and we're going to step out in obedience and lean into this and lean into learning how to do this and trust that everything that we need to do or feels heavy, that you're going to help us figure out how to do that if we honor your design in your way. And so that was a beginning where we came together and we said, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to start to figure this out. We're going to learn about Sabbath and we're going to start to do this. And so that was our step one. So the second theological uh, point that I want to talk to you guys about is that Sabbath is a gift. This is not one more thing to do. This is not something to throw on your back and go, okay, oh, I have to do one more thing. Sabbath is a gift to us. It is not something that we earn. It cannot be earned. And that's the the mindset that I was in. Well, I need to earn. I need to, I need to do enough so that I am given the gift of a day off or the gift of rest or the I, I'm given rest or I, I deserve it. I worked hard enough and now I deserve it. But God's kingdom doesn't work that way, you guys. We don't deserve what we get. God gives us gifts, the gifts of salvation, the gifts of so much. Guys, when are we going to get it into our head, right? That God's kingdom works different. It isn't earned. It is a gift. And Sabbath is exactly that. It is a gift. It is a gift from God, a gift of a day of restoration where our soul is able to breathe and trust and lean in and remember that we are not running the universe, that God is. And we'll talk a lot, a little bit about more about that when we talk about identity for formation. But just you don't earn Sabbath. It is a gift. It is a gift to us every seven days from God. And if you're not taking advantage of that, it's like you left a present on the table that you're not opening. So I hope today that your heart is compelled and inspired and invited to open this gift that God has for you and start to discover it and start to learn it and start to live in it. Guys, it's a gift. It is a command, but it is a gift. It is the best command ever. And I hope that after today, your heart feels stirred. You feel um, loved. You feel cared for because that's exactly what Sabbath does. It is a love gift and a care gift from our Father to us as we walk out this hard life at times. So, all right. So we need to receive that gift. Um, Work is wonderful. I just want to continue to affirm God designed us to work. Work is not the bad guy here. We actually, Adam had a job 
before the fall. We are all made to work. So let's work hard, right? Let's work hard for seven or sorry. (laughs) Uh, Let's work hard for six days. Let's steward well the assignments in our hands. Let's work really hard. And then that seventh day, let's rest. You know, the advertisements, right? Every lots and lots of advertisements are trying to sell us rest. They're trying to sell us uh, these things that we're longing for in our heart. And here we have a God who's every seven days given us a mini vacay, a mini 24 hour holiday vacay. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what that 24 hours can look like. But Jesus modeled this. You know, when Jesus was here, he observed the Sabbath. And when the Pharisees challenged him about the Sabbath, he actually clarified that man was not made for the Sabbath. This isn't something that God needs from us, that the Sabbath was made for man as a gift. And uh, I do want to encourage you, and I love even when, uh, when Jesus was kind of you know, called out by the Pharisees because his disciples had picked some grain on the Sabbath and he was healing on the Sabbath and he was doing certain things uh, that the Sabbath, this isn't a legalism thing either. This isn't a legalistic thing where it's like, oh, okay, like if we screw it up or we don't do it wrong, again, it's a gift. And so we want to utilize the gift, but we it's not legalistic. And we can talk about that a little bit when we talk about how we uh, walk that out and observe it. Again, it's a gift. Feel the freedom. It's a gift. <laughs> okay. Next is Sabbath is a day of identity transformation. Now, there's actually a couple different places in the Bible. There's two different places where God uh, commands, has commandments about Sabbath. One is in Exodus that we already read earlier. And the second one is in Deuteronomy. And so I'm going to read this one. And this is right before the Israelites are going to go into the promised land. And remember, they had been in Egypt. And they had been slaves in Egypt, and they had a certain mindset of slavery. And so he is actually in, as he's inviting them into this new land, this land flowing with milk and honey, where they have the opportunity to be prosperous and to start to rely on their own strength. And they're going to forget what it was like to be slaves in Egypt and the oppression of that. They're going, he, 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 he changes what he says a little bit about Sabbath so that it actually helps become an identity former for them, that they can remember that they are not slaves to anything, that we are not slaves to anything. This is not just for them. It's for us to know we are not slaves. We live in a modern day Egypt where we are oppressed from all sides. We are invited all the time to make gods out of all of these things around us, to become slave drivers to ourselves, to make ourselves slaves to our work and to the desires that we have have and to materialism and to all of these things. So this isn't just a command to them. It's a command to us as we are invited to every seven days be reminded of our identity, whose we are, whose, uh, that we are not slaves. We are not slaves to anything. We are sons and we are daughters of the King. We are sons and we are daughters of God and we trust in him. So let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy. It says uh, in Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15, observe the Sabbath. Don't just remember it. Observe it. Resist against the culture that is trying to make you slaves. Resist it, okay? Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, setting it apart, prioritizing it. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord God. On it you shall do no work. Um, You shall... You shall not do any work, neither you, nor your sons or daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, not any foreigner residing in your town, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember, you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God has brought you out of there with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. The Lord your God has brought you out with a mighty outstretched arm, you guys. We have been brought out of slavery. We do not have to be slaves to the things that are oppressing us 
And we, and Sabbath is a way to resist that. And we'll talk about it in a little bit, but the Jewish culture lights two candles on Sabbath. They light one to remember the Sabbath day, the first command, and the second one is lit to observe the Sabbath day. So we remember and we observe, we remember that we can trust in God, that he is running the universe, that we don't have to do it. And we observe the Sabbath as an act of resistance to the culture, as identity formation. We observe it as an act of worship. Our, to our God. And, and so it's just, it's just really, it's really exciting. It's really fun. So I hope you guys are getting <laughs> stirred by this already. So identity formation, it is a day to resist. It is a day to let our minds be renewed and our identity to be restored as sons and daughters of a loving God. Um, one of the things that we also do on Sabbath is we calibrate our desires. It is not a day to focus on wants and needs. It is a day to delight and thank God for what has been done. God patterned that when he uh, Sabbathed in the first, uh, in, in creation, right? He created, then he said it was good. And on that seventh day when he rested, he was able to look back and enjoy all that he had did, all that he had already called good. And that's one of the things that we get to do on Sabbath. We get to look at what our hands have done have been put to. We get to call it good. We get to resist our 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 never ending insatiable appetite and desire that always wants more. We say, stop, it's enough. It's enough. It's good. I'm grateful for what I have. It's good. I call it good. It's enough. Today, today it's enough. In this 24 hour period of time, I'm going to say it's enough. It, it's the way that we calibrate our desires. It Ecclesiastes 1.8 says, desire is never satisfied. All of us live with chronically unsatisfied desires. God, this is, or guys, this is not a, a one of us issue. This is a all of us issue. All of us have desire calibration needs. And Sabbath is one of those days where we get to stop and we get to say it's good. And we get to be grateful and we get to say, thank you. It's enough. And uh, we, uh, I, I'll, I'll read you one more quote, guys. Um, Ada, uh, Abraham Heschel, in his book, The Sabbath, it says, To the biblical mind, however, labor is a means toward an end. And the Sabbath, as a day of rest, as a day of abstaining from toil, is not for the purpose of recovering one's lost strength and becoming fit for the sake of life. Man is not a beast of burden, and the Sabbath is not for the purpose of enha- enhancing the efficiency of his work. His work. Last in creation, first in, of, first in intention, the Sabbath is the end of the creation of heaven and earth. The Sabbath is not for the sake of the weekdays. The weekdays are for the sake of the Sabbath. It is not an interlude, but the climax of living. You guys, we get to stop every seven days and really live in and just stop and sit and have a climax of life where we celebrate and we delight and we enjoy and we rest and all of the things that are and we worship and we worship and we have extended times of worship with our God it's what our hearts long for one of the things that our hearts long for so I hope that that compels you and you can get a little picture of how Sabbath can be a day for um, desire calibration. It can be a day of, of identity formation. It can be a day of resistance to become uh, the slaves that our culture is trying to invite us to become. So uh, I have one more uh 
quote from you. And a lot of these books, when I read Ruthless Elimination of Harry in the back, it has references of all of these books that John Mark Homer had read on Sabbath. And so I decided when I went on a silence and solitude that I was going to buy all of these books and I was going to read every book that I could get my hands on on Sabbath again because I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't, I don't know how to do this. I need help. So I just devoured every one of those books and they were all so good and they all had so much great information in there. But this is from a book by Walter Brueggemann as in and, and his book is called Sabbath as Resistance. It says that divine rest on the seventh day of creation has made clear, has made it clear that Yahweh is not a workaholic. Yahweh is not anxious about the full function of creation and that the well-being of creation does not depend on endless work. This performance and exhibit of divine rest thus characterizes the God of creation itself itself and the creatures made in the image of a resting God. That just really impacted me that we are creatures. We are beloved sons and daughters made in the image of a resting God. And so if our goal is to continue to be disciples of Jesus, who Jesus was a, 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 a the son of God, right? He was our representation of God here on earth. That is our our path to become, to sit in the arms and the Father of a resting God. And we get to do that every uh, seven days. Okay, guys. So I think I combined a couple. No, I did good. I got the, the identity and then uh, also the resistance. And so we're going to go ahead and we are going to talk about the four practicals of Sabbath. Okay. So we have stop, rest, delight and worship. So the first one is stop. And it's interesting because Sabbath, that's literally what the word means. It simply means it to stop, to stop doing something. And, and this is like, this is the actual definition from Cambridge uh, Dictionary, as well, the Cambridge definition, as well as the Webster, Webster di- I'm getting a little tongue tongue guys. Okay. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, the Cambridge definition, as well as the Webster Dictionary definition, it says to stop doing something, especially something that someone else does not want you to do. <laughs> that That's funny. Uh, okay. Because I apparently God doesn't want us to keep doing that on, on Sabbath. He doesn't want us to keep working. And the Webster's dis- Dictionary says to cease, to s- proceed or act, uh, stop, cease, quit, discontinue, deceased. Uh, anyways, you get the idea. So it means to stop. So basically... The idea is to set a 24-hour period of time. And if you hear that and you go, oh my word, I can never do 24 hours, start where you can start. First of all, you can do 24 hours. You can. You absolutely can. We do. And this is also modeled from the Jewish uh, pattern of sundown to sundown. So a 24-hour period of time. So our family, we do... Uh, approximately 8 p.m. on Friday to 8 p.m. on Saturday. And so a 24-hour period of time. But start where you can start. If you can start with an hour, if you can start with two hours, just start. Be intentional. Carve it out. Make it holy. Prioritize it. Do it, you guys. Start to carve out that space where you can carve it out, uh, where you can go, this is where I'm going to start to practice Sabbath out of obedience, out of receiving the gift and continuing to start to discover the gift that God has for me. This is where I'm going to start. I'm going to stop and I'm going to carve out that space. Um, uh, That's really that stop. I mean, (laughs) basically be consistent. Don't be, you don't have to be legalistic, but be consistent. We understand sometimes, you know, we have to make adjustments sometimes and we make those adjustments. And then the next week we get to do it again, but we have a set time that we say, this is our Sabbath. This is when we are going to, uh, Sabbath. And if an an exception needs to be made, then we will make some slight adjustments. We know, you know, we do it Friday to Saturday. So sometimes there's a wedding or sometimes there's an event where we agree and we go, this is a Sabbath exception. And we're going to figure out how to even within this activity, still delight, still worship, still 
keep our focus on God and enjoy. So even within that, even if there's some exceptions or there's an activity that hops in or whatnot, we still try to prioritize that time as a time to receive the gift of Sabbath that God has for us. So the next one is rest. Guys, this is amazing. This is rest is what it means. It means sleep. It means relax. It means take a nap. It means read a book. It means do things that bring rest to your soul. Take a bubble bath. Rest. Take your time on your Sabbath to rest. Carve out things that you know bring rest and restoration to you. Literally sleeping, but then other things that are restful to you. And so two is rest. It is. Isn't this exciting, you guys? We have a day where we get to stop and we get to rest. So far, this is so, so good. The next thing, next uh, thing to prioritize on Sabbath is delight. It is a day to delight. So what brings delight to your soul? Mark, uh, John Mark Homer talks about pleasure stacking on Sabbath. Uh, they make amazing sourdough and they have community and over and have incredible food. And uh, he said he likes to read fiction on those days and doesn't normally read fiction. And I'll tell you for myself, uh, the things that we enjoy to do, taking a bike ride with our family, uh, we have brunch. I mean, I'm excited to kind of talk to you through uh, a day of our Sabbath. We do. We sleep in. Our kids are older now, so they do that. If you have little kids, that's one of the things that I wanted to bring to your, just if you're like, we could never do this. There's ways to do it with little kids too. You can take turns having alone time on Sabbath. You can find ways, even with small kids or whatever season of life that you're at to do Sabbath and start to put this practice. And I'm so grateful. There's literally over the last four years, I'm so, so grateful for this time. It has been such precious time with our family every week. Everyone looks forward to it. It is not something that anybody groans or moans about. It is something that is a delight and that we all look forward to every single week. So delight, uh, take a walk, take a bike ride, enjoy a good book, take a bubble bath, enjoy an amazing meal, play games with your family, enjoy intimacy with your spouse. What can you delight in that will fill up your soul? It's a day for delight. So start to imagine, guys, give yourself permission on that day to delight and to involve the Lord in all of it and to celebrate his goodness. Practice gratitude. List the things that you're grateful for. Slow down. Look around. Thank God for what you have. And then last, which is really first, it really is first, is worship. I actually, this week, uh, it was a busier week, so my uh, daily times with the Lord weren't as extended as normal. I didn't really have a good day where I could just really, I mean, they were they were limited to this week in, in the mornings. It was quicker. It was just like, okay, we're going to sit down. We're going to have time. But it wasn't extended time. And I realized, oh, I'm so looking forward to Sabbath where I can sit down and have some extended time with God. And so it's a time for extended time with God, for worship. And I know we talked about worship. And worship isn't just singing songs. There's a lot of ways to worship. It can include music. But uh, sitting with the Lord, praying, worshiping God. We watch Bible project videos on Sabbath where we can uh, just learn more about scripture and the Bible together as a family. So it's like a day where you can dig into the word and you can have Psalms that you read and it's special things that you do on Sabbath that just remind you who God is and helps you connect with him spiritually. But worship, it's its all day. The, the idea is to just all day have an extra awareness of God, to just delight in him all day, to worship God in all the things that you're doing. So stop, rest, uh, delight, and worship. That's a day, a Sabbath day. So let me just, uh, with the time that we have left, we have a couple minutes left here. Let me just kind of walk you through a typical Sabbath day at the Hayes household. Uh, like I said, and this is this is just an idea. I don't even know if we're 
doing it all exactly. I don't know if there's a right way exactly, but this is what we do. And this is going to continue to you know evolve as our family evolves. But we start our Sabbath, and I meant to bring them, but we have two candles, and we've recently designated them as our Sabbath candles. But we have two pillar candles that uh, we will light when our Sabbath begins. And like I said, we will start 8, 8 p.m. to 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m. on Friday to 8 p.m on Saturday is our typical Sabbath. So we will light our candles and we will pray together as a family. And again, some of these things we've implemented slower, you know, over the years and stuff, but we will pray and we'll start our Sabbath. Sometimes uh, the prayer is in the morning too, but we try to always remember to pray together as a family to start our Sabbath. We light our candles as a, a, the remembrance. There are Sabbath candles that we've been enjoying recently. And, uh, and then on Fridays, usually we hang out and we'll play a game. We'll order pizza. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll watch a movie as a family. A lot of times we'll watch a movie and it's just where we shut it off. And is it designated time just to be together as family and to shut it down and to, uh, to, to rest and to light. And then Saturdays, uh, we will sleep in as a family and then we'll get up and we'll have a, a brunch. Oh, and I forgot to talk to you guys about preparation day. So actually in the Bible, it was so fun. I was reading in Mark 15 uh, when it was actually talking about, and we're coming up to Easter here, it was talking about the bear. Uh, the burial of Jesus. And it actually was talking about how it was preparation day. And this was early on when I was uh, starting to, we were starting to practice Sabbath. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is preparation day? And I looked it up and sure enough, it, and I thought, oh my, I bet this is for Sabbath. And sure enough, it was Sabbath. And so the best way to prepare for Sabbath, and this is how it was required back in uh in Judaism and still is, is that everything is prepared ahead of time so that on Sabbath, you're not working, you're not cooking, you're not doing all this stuff, you're not uh, trying to figure things out. You decided it before. And so Sabbath actually is a day of rest. Think about it if you like holidays, <laughs> has a holiday where you prep ahead of time so that the actual day, you're actually able to enjoy all of the things that you've prepared. And that's really the idea with Sabbath, that you take a preparation day and you plan and you cook and you do the things so that on Sabbath, it is a day of delight. It's easy. It's it's done. It's already decided. And so I'm continuing to get better at that one, uh, thinking through how we're, you know, what we're eating and the things that we're doing that day. So we're not making tons of decisions. We're just enjoying. So Saturday mornings after everybody sleeps in, depending on how that works, some people will get up and start doing God time. And then we'll gather together for our Sabbath brunch where we have a special psalm that we always, uh, well, we, I say always, my kids would probably be like, no, we don't always do it, but we try to. We have our special Sabbath psalm, which they would absolutely be on board with, um, that we read often, which we picked this one out because we really loved. Uh, and it's just different parts of Psalm 90. It says, oh, Lord, you have been our dwelling place place for all generations from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And so that has become a Sabbath song, psalm for us that we read just to put our mind and our hearts in the right places. So we'll sleep in, we'll go around, we'll have extended family time at the table where we talk about our weeks and we write down certain things that we're grateful for. We have a book as a black book, a Sabbath book, where we will write down things throughout the year and just keep a record. And um, as, as much as it makes sense, and again, it feels free and good and stuff to do that. And then after that, we will go and we will have um, some more extended time with God. And if whoever didn't read their Bibles yet, or whatnot, we'll do that. And then we will sometimes watch a Bible project video as a family. And we have tech rules on our Sabbath where uh, we don't do any sort of technology or anything like watch movies or anything or do anything like that on a Saturday, unless there's an exception until after 5 p.m. And so we have 
uh, an extended time where there's no technology, there's no distractions. And so it's a great time to read books, to get in our, uh, to go deeper in our Bibles, to uh, then maybe do a family activity, go on a bike ride, delight. Again, just trying to, you know, figure out, and we do different things all the time, um, but we'll try to incorporate some sort of family activity. But again, stopping, resting, delighting, worshiping. And the biggest thing for us as adults, and this is a a, a big, a big thing. The biggest thing for uh, Scott and I, and we uh, adopted this verbiage really early on in our Sabbath journey, is that it is a day where we are not producing. We are delighting. We are not producing. And I just have to tell you, it is one of the hardest things for me <laughs> about Sabbath is not thinking about things that need to be done or things that I want to do or things that I want to prove. I swear, I I feel like I get the best ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sabbath sometimes. And then I'm like, no, stop, delight, be happy with what you have, appreciate, be great. You know, I remember one time driving, uh, we had went to Lake Michigan for the day and we were driving home and there was a landscaping billboard. And I just remember seeing that landscaping immediately. I started thinking about our yard and all the things. And then I was like, nope, I'm happy with the rocks that we have. I delight in the rocks that I have and just said, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to produce today. I'm not going to dream. I'm not going to plant. I'm going to delight. And it has been such a uh, discipline uh, for me. And it has been so great. And it has been so freeing to really continue to just rein my heart back in desire and go, no, stop it, (laughs) Erica. You be appreciative, delight, be grateful, uh, appreciate call it good. What you have, it's good. It's good. Look at what you have and it's good. It has been such a wrestle with my soul and I'm so grateful for that wrestle and for that weekly reminder to go, it is good. Call it good. Call it good, Erica. So I don't know if any of you guys will, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you will empathize with that same wrestle of uh, continuing to being pulled, but it's a great discipline every week that we focus on. So I, uh, it's not, yeah, I have a thing here. It's not a day to solve problems or dream up something new. Uh, it is a day to retrain my mind to stop in delight. So guys, that is, I want to give you a couple, uh, traditional Sabbath practices that uh, we have been taught that we have learned that you can kind of get as ideas for Sabbath. I actually, as I was preparing for this message, found so many videos online of people who are doing Sabbath, uh, Protestant Christians, Jews, uh, uh, in the, in the Judaism or, uh, in, um, in Judaism practicing, uh, a, Shabbat. And so you can just hop online and there are so many great uh, tutorials about how to prep for Sabbath, what to do on Sabbath. So this is a journey that we can all continue together. But here are just uh, a couple ideas that uh, was found in the Practicing the Way curriculum by John Mark Comer. It's an incredible uh, curriculum that I'm sure at some point we're going to soon, hopefully we're going to be bringing to Element so that we can all start to really just walk these out in an extended way and just continue to learn and get these into rhythms of our life. But uh, ideas uh, to do on Sabbath, light, lighting the candles, blessing your children, eating a Sabbath meal, expressing gratitude, singing, worshiping in your church, walking, napping, Uh, enjoying intimacy with your spouse, reading, especially scripture, spending time alone with God, spending time with families and friends in conversation and celebration. And that is one thing. Sabbath is uh, a wonderful time for community too. It is not necessarily something to just be done in isolation. It is a wonderful time to celebrate community and be together. And so guys, that's basically... That's basically it for today. I hope your heart feels stirred. I hope you feel invited to something wonderful. Not, again, one more thing for our to-do list, but something that is a gift for God, from God, that our soul is longing for. Rest, delight, worship, 
It is so exciting. So let me pray for you. Let me pray for all of us as we continue to dive into these practices and live a transformed life and continue to realize how amazing our God is with all of the incredible gifts that he gives us, with the incredible instruction that he gives us, and that it's all for our good. So Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for the gift of Sabbath. Lord, continue to teach us your ways. God, teach us your ways, Lord. Help us walk in your wisdom and your truth. Continue to help us to walk out these practices that will help transform our life, Lord, and just help us to walk in the fullness of life that you have designed us to here on earth. So thank you for giving us Sabbath. Thank you for uh, the teaching that has been done and will continue to be done and help us to to go in a different direction, Lord, to re-implement this if it was at one time part of our lives or to implement it for the first time, God. Today's the day, God, a turning point where we have been given permission, God, we have been given permission to rest and we will lean into that, God, in obedience and trust, God, in you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. Have an amazing Sunday, and it will be exciting to continue to hear how we all start to walk this out in new ways in our element community. God bless you guys.